everyone. Happy New Year. I hope the New Year finds everyone well and I hope you all are having a great year so far. As you can tell from the title of this video, 10 beauty tips that every woman should know. Well, this all came about because I just came back from a girls weekend with my college friends. Every year we get together and we pick a different city and this year we went to Austin, Texas and we had a great time. Um, but it's funny because when we're going out, a lot of them will say, who's got a blow dryer? Who has a curling iron? And it seems like I'm the one always saying, I do, I do. And they tease me because I come with, you know, so many brushes and curling irons. It seems like the older that I've gotten, the more stuff that comes along. So they tease me about that. And um, usually I end up doing their hair and makeup before we go out, which is fun. But I thought I'd put together a list of 10 things that every woman should know and especially women over 40 because it was fun hanging out with my friends to find out some things that they didn't really know about and I know a lot of us that watch the beauty videos here know a lot about you know beauty tips hair and makeup that type of thing but there are a lot of people who don't so if you're used to watching these types of videos you may know everything in this video and you may not find it helpful but if you don't, then here are 10 tips that I think every woman should know. Tip number one is to wash your makeup brushes. I know this is something we all know, but you really should do it. And um, I thought of this one because on the trip, one of my friends is very attached to her blush brush. And she pulled it out and it was like a mangled, just, I, it looked like a fork had stabbed the blush brush. It did not look like a blush brush at all. I even offered to get her a new one and she said, no, I love this one. So I'm teasing her in good fun. She knows that I tease her every time she whips that thing out. But really, um, there was so much makeup down in it. It was kind of gross. So um, tip number one is to wash your makeup brushes. We know that bacteria can build up and it's just a good idea to wash your brushes. That way it's cleaner on your face and everything. One of the best videos that I watched on how to wash your makeup brushes was by Rachel Wade. And she's a makeup artist out of New York. And what I'll do is go ahead and link her video below. What she uses is Master's Brush Cleaner. And this is what artists use to clean their paint brushes. And it's really easy. You just wet your brushes, swirl it around in this soap that's in the container and rinse them out. And it's really easy and it makes washing brushes kind of fun too because it's just so easy. So. Don't forget to wash your makeup brushes. Tip number two is to wash your face every night and every morning and remove your makeup before you go to bed. I was so surprised. We all went out, we had a night of drinking, and some of my friends would just come back and go straight to bed without washing their face or taking off their makeup. And so for me, if I don't take off my makeup, the next day I wake up and I've got like zits everywhere and I can't stand to go to bed with mascara on because I just wake up and my eyes are all sensitive and red. So just don't forget to take off your makeup every night. The makeup remover that I like to use is Kiehl's Supremely Gentle Eye Makeup Remover. This one is a cream-based formula, so if you're used to a liquid or an oil-based, you may not like this one, but I like this one and it works well for me and I've got sensitive skin and eyes. Going along with washing your face, remember your little routine. So, you know, it's washing your face, it's exfoliating, it's using a toner if that's what you use, a moisturizer to put hydration back in your skin. Just remember your regimen. And that brings me to tip number three, which is to know your skin type so that you can select the products that are formulated for your skin type. One of my friends on the trip, I was putting makeup on her and I used the Laura Mercier foundation primer on her and was putting on her foundation. And she said, why don't you use oil free? And I said, I don't use oil free because in the winter my skin is dry so I don't need the oil free and she's like oh my skin's dry too so I was trying to explain to her that she's also got rosacea so it's important to know your skin type that way you can find products that work for your skin so if you are more dry in the winter you'll use more hydrating products if you have oily skin you can use some oil free products that type of thing so tip number three is know your skin type and select products that are made for your skin type tip number four is to Educate yourself and learn how to use hot tools for your hair. Um, I was surprised that one of my friends had never curled her hair herself. So one of the nights she asked me to curl her hair. So she had a cute little bob. So I just curled it with a curling iron and rolled it all back. 
Um, well, the next night I was doing another friend of mine's makeup and she said, can I borrow your curling iron? So I said, sure. And so she was in there and she comes out and we were dying laughing because she must have put the clamp going the wrong way and crimped it so bad that we actually had to wet her hair and re-blow it dry because we couldn't smooth it out with the curling iron. And she was laughing, saying that she had never curled her hair, and she's 42 years old. So what I'll do is I have some videos on how to curl your hair, how to blow dry it, different brushes that you can use. I'll link some videos below on how to use curling irons and that type of thing. So that way you can do different things with your hair. Number five is to pick the correct foundation for your skin type and your coloring. So it's really important to find the right product for your skin. So if you have oily skin, maybe you want to use a mineral powder. If you have dry skin, maybe you want to use a liquid foundation. I think I read an article on choosing the right foundation, so I'll see if I can link that below. But it's great to go to a department store and they can test a couple shades on you and a lot of them will give you samples so that way you can take it home and try it as well before you invest in it. Same with Sephora, they are great at giving samples. So what you want to do is go in without any makeup on and they can test it kind of on your cheek to your jawline and whichever one you know you don't really see the most is going to be the match for your skin. So I see so many people walking around with the wrong foundation for their skin type and or the coloring is off you know remember in the winter we may need to switch it to a lighter color because in the winter most of us are more pale than we are in the summer and we may even need to change the formula so tip number five is to select the correct foundation for your skin type and your skin color tip number six is to blend blend your foundation blend your blush blend your eyeliner blend everything and if you think you've blended enough and you're ready to walk out the door, blend a little bit more because you can't be too blended is how I think about it. So especially foundation, some great tools for blending your foundation are the Beauty Blender. This one's dirty because I used it. This is a great way to blend your foundation. I love this. I think the Beauty Blender is the best one. I've tried the one from Target and it just wasn't as good as this one. Or use a foundation brush. This one is the Sigma F82. Use a brush to blend in your foundation because there's nothing worse than seeing the line, um, you know, with the different colors on your face. So blend your foundation. Another thing that I think is really important, especially for women over 40, is that if you use a pencil eyeliner, go back and blend it because a lot of times our eyelids get a little bit wrinkly and when you draw a line with the eye pencil, it, it looks a little jagged. So there's a way to soften it and you can either go in with a lot of the eyeliners have the sponge tip little blenders on the end or you can go in with a smudger brush and just go along the line you created and smudge it. Um, I think it looks much better than just a drawn line that's not blended at all. If you're using a gel eyeliner it's probably going to come off a little bit smoother because you're putting it on with a brush. Same with a liquid, it goes on with a brush and if you still find that the, the edges are too harsh, what you can do is go over it with an eyeshadow that matches. Use a little smudger brush and just go over it with an eyeshadow. That way you can soften the lines and it doesn't look so harsh. So that tip is to blend everything. Number seven is don't forget about your eyebrows, especially if you've got blonde hair. You know, a lot of times your eyebrows kind of blend into your face because they're so light. So if you can use a taupe eyeshadow or eyebrow pencil to fill in your brows just to define them a little bit more, it really looks great. Um, also, if you've got dark eyebrows, if you go and do this beautiful smoky eye look and your eyebrows are just mangled, it ruins the whole look. So just, you know pluck them or have someone go to a salon and have someone do it so you can follow the lines. I have someone pluck mine. I can't get them waxed because I break out. And then I just kind of follow the lines in between when she does it and just pluck them and trim them myself. I don't have a video on eyebrows, but I'll see if I can find one and link it below. Eyebrows can really help frame your face. So I think it's important to remember your eyebrows. Number eight is put a little bit of color on your lips. Now I'm not saying you have to go bright red or dark like this, but I see so many people that just wear a nude lip gloss or just a nude lipstick 
and it just blends into their face. And I'm not saying that you can't wear a nude lipstick because a lot of people can and get away with it. I'm just saying that I think if you put a little bit of color, whether it's got a pink, mauve, coral, brownish tint to it, that most people look better with a little bit of color on their lips. So am I saying that you can't wear a nude lip? Absolutely not, and I think it looks great on some people. I'm just saying that if you feel a little bit washed out sometimes, try a little bit of color on your lips and see what you think. Tip number nine, and some of you aren't gonna like me for this one, is that especially if you're over 40, I challenge you to look in a magnifying mirror and see if you don't have any unwanted hairs in this area. I know growing up I had a little bit of the peach fuzz and it was light colored. And then all of a sudden when I hit 40, it seemed like it just got a little bit more. So what's funny is my mother-in-law actually bought me some of these little facial razors. And the reason she bought them was because she said that if she got sick or she got too old where she couldn't see, she wanted someone to be able to shave the little whiskers off her chin and on her lips. So I thought that was funny. Um, there are two different types of these little razors that you can use to remove any unwanted facial hair. And I started doing this a couple years ago, and originally I thought, oh my gosh, if I shave, is it going to grow back like this beard or something? And for me at least, it has not. I've heard a lot of people doing this, and they don't seem to have that problem. There are two different types of razors. This red one I got at Sally's, and I think this blue one came from... Ulta. I actually prefer the longer one better because I feel like it can um, do a better job than the shorter ones. Be careful when you first start to use these razors um, because there is a technique to get used to it and knowing how much pressure to put on your skin. What you want to do is go into it at a 45 degree angle. So if you think of a, you know, a 90 degree angle being a corner or like an L, you're going to want to go in at 45 degrees and just remove any unwanted hair. So I challenge you take a look in that um, magnifying mirror and hopefully we can all get rid of any unwanted hair. Tip number 10 is to use sunscreen. And I know when I was in my teens and in my 20s and even into my early 30s, I didn't want to use sunscreen, especially on my face, because I thought if my face was tan, then I looked better and I always felt better. So knowing what I know now and having a few of the sunspots on my face, my recommendation is to use sunscreen. If you're not going to use it anywhere else, use it on your face because that way you can prevent sun damage, prevent fine lines. Um, and I know it, everyone looks great with a tan and especially on your face, but there are things that you can do. You can use a self tanner. You can use a tinted moisturizer. You can use foundation and bronzer to get your color to match your skin. So tip number 10 is to use sunscreen, especially on your face. A bonus tip that I have, especially for women over 40, is to use a mid-tone brown eyeshadow in the crease of your eyes. Especially if you've got hooded eyes, droopy eyes, saggy eyes, it can really help to lift your eye. I've got hooded eyes, so I definitely need that mid-tone brown in the crease and I bring it up a little bit above to help lift my eye. Some great colors that I like to use are the Smashbox, this is the nude color. Um, in the Naked palette, there are two that are matte shades, and matte shades work better for this. And they are Naked, and if you have a little bit darker skin, Buck, the two matte shades in here. Also, another great one is Wedge from MAC and Soft Brown. Um, Wedge is on the very last row here, and most of you know what Soft Brown looks like. It's just a great way to define your crease and give your eyes a little bit of lift, especially if you're in your 40s. So I know there are so many other tips, and I would love to hear from you all what your tips are, because um, I feel like I could go on and on talking about each one of these, and I know there's more. So I hope you found this helpful, and I would love to hear your tips below. So thank you so much for watching, and I hope you all have a great day. Bye.